Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Trading Room. And today is Thursday, January 30th. We have about 40 minutes to go into the start of the session today. Uh, let's see where the price is after FOMC. FOMC left the rates unchanged. Uh, today we had the advanced GDP that came in at 8.30 and we saw a little bit of bounce, I would say, just a very shallow, shallow bounce. Uh, today, 10.30, natural gas prices and uh, by the way, natural gas, brand new low into the 180s, 182. That's where it is trading right now. Uh, and uh, these are the economic releases for the day. Uh, have you guys watched Tesla last night? Tesla? Okay, so uh, the plan is pretty simple. It was emailed to you guys. It was also posted here in the room. We're going to be bullish in uh, YM over 28,600. We're going to be bullish uh, in the m and &E over 3,260. We're going to be bullish in NASDAQ over uh, 70, 70 zone. And uh, we're going to be bullish in Russell over this range into the 41, 41 and change. Uh, no trades in gold today. We are still having that little lot in for those of you that are swinging it with me. Yesterday, it has achieved all the targets into 80, 81, 83. Uh, so very nice profits there. And I have my last lot for a trail into uh, the 80s. Bonds are also uh, doing a bull sandwich. In fact, uh, today it has triggered above that range of the bull sandwich trading right now. Uh, it had hit a high of 163. So we're going to take a look at that. I like to use that, let's say, for mostly for hedging. Uh, the one other thing, so the levels are posted here in the room. The trading levels are posted here in the room. Um, obviously, NASDAQ, one of the strongest indices. Remember that they are, even if they're coming into that bullish territory, so I have, a, a, you know, um, reserve, you know, I'm a little bit reserved in terms of um, price. So I'm not going to take them right off the bat. We're going to go to smaller time frames in just a second. Uh, because NASDAQ is under a lot of pressure from the 20 SMA, from that uh, overhead resistance into the 69, uh, but it is also going to trigger that four hour rotation. So I like NASDAQ for higher because it is the strongest index. Also, for um, a short squeeze, oil 52.54 would be the entry, and the stop below the low of the day 51 under 51.90. Uh, first target is going to be into this uh, 10 EMA into the 5280, and then we're going to look for a second target into 53, maybe 53 and change, but 53 is going to be the bigger number. Uh, we had pretty much an accelerated sell here with a brand new low. So you can see the price came down and back up, down, made a new low. So this would be a shallow counter bounce here. Also, uh, oil is trading on massive monthly and weekly support. So that would be the theme for, uh, for the trade. The New York trading session high is actually 52.34. That would be the trigger for the range breakout from the New York trading session. The higher odds trade would actually be by executing this four hour rotation uh, into the uh, 52.34. 50, 52.54. Uh, like I said, I'm watching NASDAQ right now. Four hour rotation in NASDAQ, it's what's going to be in play today. Okay. Trigger. Let's see. So 80, 100, then we're going to go for 110, and then 20. Okay, here's target one. Not putting my stop yet at break even. It's really too close. It's very, very close. We need to break over this 
80 to 85 in order to start progressing higher. Like I said in the letter today, um, NASDAQ is the strongest index that have, has the best chance chances of rotating higher. All right, here's the 90. Matt, awesome, good job. Okay, we had a pretty consistent advance. Stay tuned for trailing on this. These are all four hour rotations, all four hour rotations. We have a bit of divergency that is coming in at 93 and 94. Right now, the price is above the newer trading session, one minute, 10 EMA. We're also into heavy divergence here from the 50 SMA and from the uh, 200 SMA on the 30 minute. Same concept, John, same concept with ESYM Russell, same concept. It's a four hour rotation at the four hour rotation trigger. All right, we trailed out of gold, officially trailed out of gold at 80, last lot. Last lot, trail at 80. Leave it in. These four hour triggers are very important. GC as well, same concept. I'm gonna uh, place an order now for 54. Fifty-two, fifty-four. All right, it triggered. CL is active. Ninety-one hundred hit. Stay close because I may be lifting the stop up, but not yet. Great job, Dan. Awesome. All right. So we have reached a pivot at 111 area, and that is creating a bit of weakness here. Room, like I said, we have we actually have room to the 50 SMA on the four hour, which is uh, 91.33 in NASDAQ. I'm thinking of locking in 9,100. I'm just thinking it. I'm gonna be on the mic all this time. So keep in mind, be have your finger on the button. Have your finger on the button. If we don't break, yeah, lock it in, guys. Lock it in. 91, a little bit of shift in momentum here. 9100 trail. Yep, 9100 trail. Momentum is slowing down. Volume dropped a little bit. We're into that pivot point and it's a double whammy pivot point. New York trading session and also we have the overnight trading session pivot low. Keep that stop. 9101 right now, 0.75. 9100 trail out. 9100 trail out. Let's see if it holds. So I just placed 
I lifted my heart stop into the 9100. If we break the 11, 9110, 9111, we're going to go straight to 20. Take at least half off here, at least half off. Half off or three quarters take out here and then leave the rest for trailing above. You only have one contract or one lot, keep the stop at 9,100. Yes, CL will have a hard stop. CL is going to have a hard stop 89 is my hard stop. 51.89, trail stop, oh, trail stop. What am I talking about? Hard stop. There we go, baby. We're going again. That little one minute curl, rotation, break above the pivot. We need to have this mini one minute candle close above this pivot and 50 SMA, New York trading session charts. And then we could go straight to 20. Trail stop is still 9100. All right, I'm just making some, yeah, yeah, I, I, I just mentioned it. Nine, one, zero, zero. Seventy and eighty. Damn, seventy and eighty. Seventy and eighty. This is this is target one, and then we're gonna go for fifty-three. Very aggressive. Wide stop. Ninety one oh one is where NASDAQ was trading last. We're still holding by a thread. Nine one zero zero, we're out and we booked some profits. Done. Okay, the only trade that remains in play right now is CL. Um, 
Matthew, we may have another trade. However, this is a huge inflection point here. I was hoping to get it into the 9120. And there was a void above that, but price action needs to resolve this. So uh, the next time that I'm looking at, probably in an hour or 30 minutes or so, we may have another break of 15 possible stop 85. So it would be 15 by 85. Uh, the daily chart is looking better with that tail tapping on the 20 and getting the lift and Yeah, it should go, it should look good. Not a fan of it. It might not have the same momentum, especially that you're having a target into 20 and then you're having immediately one into the 30s. 30 <clears throat> again is uh, tons of resistance. <clears throat> In fact, 25 to 30. It has a pause on the five minutes. So the five minute low is 97. You could use that for a stop and use the trigger above that uh, tail up 91.15, 91.15, yeah. 15, 15 and a half, 16. Over 15, so over 15. Or if you want a tighter type of play, but chances are using tighter stops is gonna probably ding you out of the trade. And the momentum is kind of like lost here. But 91.15 and change by, if you want a really tight stop, you could use this 95 for the stop. If you want a little bit of wider stop, that would be 84. I wouldn't do anything here. To me, it's in too much resistance. The move has happened. We went with the institutional money off of that four hour rotation. You can see right here that we're into this pivot and into the gap fill. Take a look at this low. And that's why the market is digesting here. The market doesn't know because this would be high, lower high. If we turn around here and go below uh, 9040, we're gonna become bearish. So it's a fine line between bullish and bearish today. That's why it was best off to go by the first four hour. And typically this is the case. Typically this is the case. You go by that four hour in the morning. That was, this is what gets you that follow through into target. All right, so NASDAQ. Entry was 70, trail out for 30 points into the 91.00. And like I said, um, the one minute is shaping for a breakout. That's why I was saying that 91.15 to 91.16 can be an entry point. You want a tighter stop, odds are you're gonna, you, you have lots of odds of stopping out if you place a real tight stop here. Can it work? Yes. It has targets into 20, 25, but at the same time, you know, I just want to show you the 30 minute chart. Okay. So this was the big issue. That's why we had targets into 80 right here. You see these tails. All right. And we have the confluence from the 50 SMA and the 10 EMA and we were landed right into target zone. Okay. Now, the more we consolidate on the one minute, right into this area, chances are we may break this point but I don't want to risk my 30 points for it. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to risk it until I see a better trade, which would be probably a pullback and then um, a continuation higher. So a much meaningful pullback. Right now we're still trading inside bar and a trigger above 15 will assure continuation even on the 15 minute. 
The reality is these really small time frames very bullish. And in fact, take a look at the moving averages fanning out. It's a sign of the momentum continuation or higher. And uh, if we digest this area enough, and if we stay here, let's say for the next 10 minutes or so, this could be a better break than, you know, just sitting here for the last five, six, eight minutes. So the longer the range, the better the support and the better the leg higher, uh, the better the progression for higher price targets. All right, oil started to work. Let's focus on oil. <clears throat> All right, we have alerts into 70 and we have alerts into 80. 80 is the first target. And the more oil is going to start progressing a little bit higher, you know, this may be better for the market as well. Let's just put an alert here, just, you know, just to keep an eye on it. Um, also a reminder, there was an email that was sent out this week. Tomorrow we have a new login, uh, for the trading room. It's actually a different room than this one. If you guys have not received it, please email me. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a very busy day. I'm also co-host of, uh, a trader's show, trader's event, an online trader's event. So it's going to be a full day. So if you have not received your login details, please email us. We'll send you uh, that information ASAP. See, we're kind of holding this area. Hmm. The 30 minute is right into minor resistance. Here's the 30 minute. So see these lows right here. I'm gonna watch this on the two minute. All right, so see, it's a super fragile time frame. I mean, it's a two minute. 
Yeah, so it broke. All right, so now we're gonna go back to our 15. Right here, here we go. All right, so we pretty much set the tone for a little bullish environment. Uh, Damon, no, I did not take any profits in oil. No, no, no. It just hit a 69 and had a high of 69. I have a target into 80. So it didn't really reach my area. It was not that close. All right, let's see how we handle it. Well, uh, first off, notice that NASDAQ is actually the one index that has progressed way better than the rest of the indices. It's a little bit stronger. Uh, notice where the 200 SMA is. Notice where the four hour rotation is. So we triggered the four hour. We pinched above the 200 SMA. Let's see how we close this 15 minute candle right here because odds are if we close it at 10 o'clock and we pretty much have support here, this can be a pause and then we this could be a setup for a break again over 91.15. Similar effect for the m and S&P. The m and S&P uh, also is trading into the 32.59. Uh, Notice that it has the, 50, the 200 SMA really way above there. It triggered the four hour, came into the target one level into resistance, but it never accelerated higher. So it came back down. Uh, let's see if we're going to close this candle at the trigger point. This can also be a pause in momentum, and then the momentum may continue once the trigger, uh, uh, once once the price triggers above this high. Uh, with uh, the Dow, uh, notice the 200 SMA is right here, and uh, the four-hour rotation is uh, into the 600. It launched higher, didn't really go that much further. It has it. It tried to get close to the 200 SMA, but the price got rejected. We have the 200 here, and we have the prior price action to the left from the overnight trading session, creating selling pressure to the price back down to 600. If we close this candle right here, and we break above the high, it's gonna be bullish into 732. But if not, uh, we could see the price go back down at least into the 28,550 if we get a break over uh, under 600. Like I said, no trades in oil. We trailed out of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, no trades in gold uh, because we trailed out at 80 from yesterday. Yesterday we achieved all our three targets and uh, we had a last lot, last lot into the 80s. It came in, you can see it right here into the 77 and change and we pretty much trailed out. Russell, uh, it is the weakest uh, right now, um, leading downside with 0.28%, uh, 4.4 and a half points down. And notice that it, it, it's the weakest index. So let me just uh, get you the four hour, four hour. This is support, of, uh, support if the price is above and resistance below. This is the fine line in the sand for it because under 30, this is going to be bearish. So if we're going to short anything today, uh, if the market conditions are going to change and if they're not going to have that bullish momentum, uh, this would be the better odd for the short Russell under uh, 1630. Uh, oil triggered and so far we can't do anything. We're still in the, in the trade right now. The 10 EMA is coming in a little, little bit uh, below the whole number. So it's into the 90s. We have a first target into 80. It had made a high of 69 and so far we have to watch a trade and let's see what the price is telling us. This would be sweet to get it right here into the 53. Really sweet. 53 and 53.5, 53.05, that is a bigger resistance point. So we should take profit if we get into that zone. All right, let's take a quick look at the stock market and see what we have in store for today. Walmart consolidating between uh, 160, it's trading right now at 116, uh, it triggers slightly. So see how the market is 
uh, you know, just triggering slightly, you know, it's, it's, the market is not tradable on setups anymore. The setups need to be on a wide, wider um, time frame. So uh, we, have, uh, we have current support for the low today into the 115.50. If it breaks today or sometime this week or even next week over 117.12, this is going to be bullish going into 118. So we'll mark, I have not taken a lot of swing trades in this market not taking a lot of swing trades in this market. Uh, like I said, we were very cautious and we rode really nicely uh, oil, we rode gold and um, uh, we had also had a trade in the VIX. And uh, other than that, we're very, very cautious. Uh, in fact, there's no rush. Uh, this week was pretty heavy with the FOMC announcement. We still have uh, coronavirus that is making headlines and uh, conditions are still choppy. Conditions are still very choppy, but uh, we need to adapt to these conditions. Okay, Apple is trading um, pretty much inside yesterday's range. Yesterday made a new high on earnings and right now is trading at 322. Facebook gap down, but it's gap down right on the 50 SMA. It's getting a bounce off of that algo rich zone. Um, Google is trading right on the 20 SMA on the daily. XLF range bound a little, looks a little bearish to me. Uh, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I held off on some of the trades. Okay, so Microsoft today, you guys know, 174, incredible jump to the upside. Tesla, you guys know the story, super, uh, uh, super gap up, extreme gap up. Um, and uh, looking overall at financials, uh, biotechs, I mean, pretty quiet uh, day in the market today, pretty quiet day. So I'm not gonna be in a rush to call any other trades uh, unless something really good is starting to set up. So our only focus right now should be oil, which in fact is a larger time frame in play. So set your alerts and uh, that's pretty much it. So it's gonna be a hands off trade. Let's check out that two minute again, pullback. See, I would have liked the pullback between 75, anywhere between 75 and 65. That would have been a much better pullback location that can sustain a further continuation into these prior highs. So uh, I'm gonna go to the two minute all across the board here just to discuss uh, because it is the top of the hour and we have our first 30 minutes in. And oops, let's get this to the two minute. All right, so currently we have a New York trading session low, uh, 517. We have overnight lows here, very close to, uh, very close to the uh, low of the open into the 500 and 510. So basically support is into the 500 zone. And we already have established the resistance back into the 28, uh, 28667. Uh, the shallower the, uh, the, shallower the pullback, uh, the more chances we have for a further continuation higher into targets. We have the targets noted right here. Uh, in fact, this could, like I said, this could be a break as well. We're pretty much getting, I think, close to a, to, yeah, we have tried to trigger this five minute uh, reversal here. Well, it is 10 o'clock and it is reversal time. NASDAQ as well, uh, 94, let's see, 94 by 79, 94 by 79. This could be a trade. It's, it's a little bit choppy here, so it doesn't have that smooth void to the upside. And Russell is curling down. Russell is also closing in on the two minute, uh, two minute reversal. So uh, Russell low uh, right into this um, 
two minute 200 SMA into the 37 and the high into the 50. Has room for higher. These are the targets above into 53, 60, and 65. And the S&P low support 48, and we have overnight into 42. And the New York trading session range is from this low into the 48 all the way into the 64. We have room for higher, as I mentioned, into the pre-market game plan for 70, for 75, 80, and going all the way into the 90s. Uh, NASDAQ, like I said, NASDAQ is my favorite because it is the strongest index. It had really amazing, you know, some components reported earnings and some earnings were really good. Outstanding, I would say, and outstanding moves. And uh, it could probably go for a ride to the upside over 94, over 94, but not, it's not going to have a big target. So the entry 94, the stop 78, first target into uh, 9100, 9107, 9110, back into these highs of 9111. So this would be the trade. 94 by 78, 94 by 78 with targets into 9100, 91, yeah, and all the way into this high right here. It's it's not that it's my favorite, it's uh, the fact that um, it is the strongest index. Two more points to 91. It's hitting the 10 EMA and these are the newer trading session charts. That's why you saw that spike and then the pull here. Place the stop at break even. If you took this trade, place the stop at break even into 90.94. So you have a risk free trade because if it pulls down and breaks 94 and 93 is gonna go back down to 86. Okay, so the stop becomes 94 right now, 94. Okay, you should be out, you should be out. The volume suddenly dropped right now. I don't see a momentum. So the price, I don't know. The price doesn't look too, too good right now at this point. Hmm. Oops, went higher. I trailed dot no. No, Sam. <laughs> excuse me, Sam. No, no, no. I trailed out. You're still, you still in? Oh, okay. Okay, good, good. 
No, because I was going to say that if you're still in, make sure that you place the stop now at break even. But no, I got out. Five minutes, five minutes is in works right now. And take a look at Dow, Boeing, trying to break above the 20 SMA right now on the daily, getting some more pressure. No, Sam, the reality is that I was expecting this type of formation to happen into 1030 and not now, because we're still under the 10 o'clock reversal. And at between 10 o'clock and 1020, you could still expect the price to pull back onto a smaller time frame range. So for day trading, day trading range. It may still fail. Like I said, most of the patterns fail between 10 o'clock and 1020. Patterns that are setting up between, and that's why I'm very cautious if I initiate a trade right into this time frame. I trail it super, super tight. So once I saw that I was in the money, I raised my stop to break even because I didn't want to have a loss. And you can see that the price is gyrating right now because it's still not getting that pressure that it's getting into the 1030 trigger time, into the prime time trigger time. All right, so. Uh, where in in the Dow, Martin, uh, seven hundred seven thirty two. Those uh, those would be seven hundred. Yeah, seven hundred seven ten seven thirty seven thirty. You're hitting here a lot of resistance. Uh, target two was, yeah, target two was hit into the 670. Oh, you, you just took the Dow? Okay. So, yeah, you hit target two at 75. 75 was target two. So, you should have raised the stop to 50 right now, right? Oh, you did. Okay. So, you should be out now. Exactly. So, once you're getting into your target one, you lift your stop to break even. You get into your target two, you lift your stop into target one. Okay, so you can see why, you know, we're back to 94, right? We're back to 94. This is why I'm not risking here. Fifth, the five minute charts look right now kind of messy, right? With a high, with a lower high. And if we break below the 79, things are going to start coming back in and the structure may not support a really viable day trade for the long side. In fact, we're going to get, we're going to be back into the chop.
All right, we are back into the chop. Oil remains the open trade. Currently, no other day trades will be called at this time. We're gonna reevaluate into 1030, but so far you can see that the trades, I mean, take a look at Russell. I didn't trade Russell because it had, the, it had relative weakness, but it hit all targets. So we traded NASDAQ for great profits. Um, Dow as well. S&P not really participating, a little bit of weakness there as well. But hey, if it breaks, so, and it has huge resistance here because the reality is it needs to trade. And if you recall yesterday, we need, still needed to break over this 3263. And this 3263 has been, and 6364 has been that trigger point for a few days now and that line in the sand, right? So if it breaks over this area, then you could see a little bit of follow through again to the upside. So it needs to break over this, this, these tails to the upside. It breaks above these tails, then yeah, it's gonna have a smooth ride to 30 to 70. If it doesn't break above these highs, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's just gonna gyrate back and forth, back and forth. And this is the new level for, yeah, absolutely, below. Uh, this is the cluster right now. You have support at 57, you have resistance at 64. I wouldn't short it here, but I would look to, uh, to go long over 60, 64, 65 area. We're still trading into the chop. 10 o'clock to 10.30 is the chop zone. These are the new clusters. So far we have support into the 80s, into the first 45 minutes of the market, and we have resistance in NASDAQ into 91.15. So support is 80, and you have resistance 15. Uh, the S&P we just talked about is support 57, resistance 64, we break 64, we go to 70. We have support 28,600, not going to short anything here, but if it breaks above 680, it has uh, it can transition higher into 700, uh, 700 and 730 30 zone. Um, gold is strengthening here a little bit. I don't have any other trades open in gold. Let's put bonds on a little bit here. All right, so. I'm gonna do weekly into resistance. This is resistance. Look at these tails right here. Look at this high. This is resistance right here, right into 63. The more the price is gonna hover into the 62 and change and try to break over 63, this is gonna be bullish with the target into 165. So now let's go to our hour and let's see what we have going on. All right, 62.11. If the market is going to go down 162.28 entry and the stop once uh, below 162.10, Okay, the first target is gonna be into the uh, 163.505, 163.05, and then look at the tradable void. Look at the tradable void into the 163.25.26. Okay, so I'm gonna replace Russell here and put bonds. So you guys, you guys, we can watch it. All right, but that would be a one hour, uh, one hour trigger. And let's get back to CL here. We can watch it on the one hour. 5 See, bonds, bonds five minute, super noisy. Let's go to the 15 minute, noisy. 30 minute, 
still noisy. Uh, let's check it out on the one hour. One hour is looking better. Let's check out the four. Hmm, the four are not that great, but still on to support, tap onto the 10 EMA. Yeah, one hour is good. Let's do it on the one hour then. Uh, let's get it 162.29. Let me type it here in the room and then I will place it on my platform. One sixty three oh four. So if the market is going to start coming in, see the market is still on support. It's trading. The Dow is trading right on that trigger point from this morning. Six hundred above six hundred is bullish. Under six hundred, it goes back into the chop. So I'm not going to do anything under. I'm not going to short it. All right, the trade is posted in the room. All right, less than 10 minutes to natural gas numbers. Elmer, I don't know if you're here. I'm watching wheat right now and see wheat is not cooperating at all. Wheat, wheat corn, I don't like any of the commodities. Still, let's just focus on indices. And copper, again, a brand new low today. Uh, I have not done anything with copper. Um, we had the biggest volume on January 27th. And it looks like we're still coming in. The, the next support level is uh, 247.4. 247.4. So it may still slide. We still have a pivot low here at 251.28. We came very close to that point, and then the next support is uh, is lower. Like I said, I didn't really have a good feel about the momentum going into this trade. That's why we locked it at break even. Yeah, I know it's, it's kind of, um, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. I, I, and to be honest, I am not going to get in any commodities soon. We're going to get some small trades into indices. It depends on, you know, the direction so far there's, I mean, so far they still don't have a clean, clear directional bias. 
we're into a bullish environment and we're just on the first uh, let's say phase of a possible pullback right in the indices Over 3,300 at M&E S&P on a larger time frame. Over 3,300 were bullish, and we have pretty much maybe 75% chances of going back into the highs, into the all-time highs. But if we break uh, the lows from um, from the 28th and from the 27th, uh, we're gonna start pushing lower. And I, my belief is that we're going to revisit the 3,200, which is the next support zone. So if, if we break 3,230, I'm going to be bearish to 3,200. And at 3,200, we're going to be bullish again. But it truly depends how we close this week. We have one more trading day and things are going to be way clearer uh, going into Monday. Why? Because... Let me take you to a different chart, okay? Uh, let's clear this. Okay, so if we end the week in a doji, things are gonna be pretty much straightforward as we're going into next week. We break above the high, right? We break above the high, this is indecision right here, right? We break above the high, 32.90. Bam, we're going higher. 75 to 80% chances we're going to continue higher. But here, the more we approach this 3230 area, 3232, 3230 area, this becomes problematic. And if we break below this area, remember, we've held once, right? And you could see that for the whole, uh, for, for this entire, for, for last quarter, right, for last quarter, including January, right, we pretty much respected the 10 exponential, right? We came in here on December 2nd, and then we had a lift again, and then we had a pullback again on the 6th, and then we lifted. And then here, we caught a little bit of air, right? We had an air bubble, and the price came in to fill that void, came back to revisit uh, the 10 EMA. The same thing, uh, it did the same thing into the end of December. So you can see that here throughout the month of December, right? On December, we had the top and then we started to rally and we the, the candles became smaller, doji, narrow range bar, uh, we have a doji. And then the next thing you know, in January, we came in to do what? To fill the void, right? We filled the void, we got extended and we filled the void. And then we got another lift. And then again, we caught air here, right? So we had a bubble of air, and now we're coming back to, uh, we came back to revisit the 10 EMA. So there's symmetry in the pattern. And now it will be decided into next week whether we're going to break above the high. And this is going to be a pullback buy off the 20th, oh, off the 10 exponential, right? So we're going to be bullish 3290 to 3300. I have no doubt in my mind that if, we, if the market is going to do that, if the S&P is going to get there, we're going to move into the highs. Uh, into the all-time highs, but the more we're going to base on the daily, and if the daily is going to remain weak and break, uh, uh, break into that uh, uh, 32 level, revisit these lows right here, the lows that bas basically these lows were created Monday, Tuesday. So if we're going to create these lows and we're going to revisit, we're going to create new lows below this low right here, Odds are that, you know, this 10, 10 EMA is not going to hold as much because it's going to get a lot of pressure from the daily chart. And the daily chart is going to start pulling in to the support zone, confluence area right here. You can see the 50 SMA, 3200, 3210 to 3200. And this is going to be, uh, this is going to be the next top. So that's why we're going to be bearish under 32 and 30 uh, with the target into 32. So that's for about 10 points. It's not that much, but um it's a high probability trade to the downside then we're going to be bullish again because if you guys recall our trade from uh from last week from russell on friday we called it short right and it worked beautifully going into uh going into the end of the day 
We hit swing targets for our day trade going into the end of the day. We held some IWM. We closed it on Monday because I said once it approaches, and this was uh, this was the trade right here. Um, okay, and like I said, hold on. back end. All right, I want to pull up the weekly. Oh, it was the bonds trade. Okay, let's go to RTY. Okay, um, daily. Okay, so the daily here, this was the Friday, right? The, and like I said, you know, once we're gonna head into this uh, six, 1650, 1650 was our target. Um, once we're gonna get into this area, I'm gonna look for a long. And basically what we did this week is we traded to the bullish side, right? So we traded to the long side and we were bullish, why? Because we saw the possibility of heading higher. Um, let's go back to bonds here. So let me know if you have any questions. So far, range bound market, no significant change. Oil still remains in play. We're triggered. We have the stop in and it's on autopilot. All right, and while we're into this chop area, like I said, no trades, absolutely no, no trades. And in fact, it's 1030 right now. We have the first full hour in the market. Let's do a quick analysis on it. And let's see if there are any opportunities or not. Okay, so New York trading session range, again, from 500 to 675. You could see the 200 SMA right here. Price got rejected back down. And we're, the price is flirting with this trigger point right here. It's not as strong anymore, right? Uh, so the m and &E SMP on the 15 minute, let me just get back to the default chart where we have our signals. Okay, let me just zoom in a little bit on the image. Uh, we're getting, so it's trading below that four hour reversal zone, it's heading back into this chop. Like I said, I have absolutely zero interest of trading into this area, into this chop. You are not going to have any kind of high probability trades. The only high probability trade was that trigger for higher and that was it. Same with, uh, same with uh, NASDAQ here. So um, the next potential setup that may happen would be in about 15 minutes or even 30 minutes. So until then, we don't have anything else. Uh, two trades in NASDAQ so far, one for 30 points, one for zero, and a break-even trade. And uh, we have a trade in oil, and don't forget, boom, bonds are gonna start triggering. 29 is the trigger. Trading at 28, we are one tick away from the trigger in bonds. And the bonds trade may also be, um, may may take a little longer than 12 o'clock. So uh, management will be, uh, management updates will be delivered on our private Twitter feed. We're also in oil, oil has triggered. We have a hard stop, 81, uh, 51.89, and we're looking for a first target into 52.70, 70, 70, 80, and 53. And if we break over 53, obviously we're gonna try to go into the 53.20, 53.20 to 25. Um, this is the 1030 update. And I'm going to be off the mic. Let me know if you guys have uh, any questions uh, until some uh, other trades may be lining up. But I don't think that we're going to get another trade in the indices today. I think we're going to stick with the uh, oil and bonds. And this is going to be the day. So I'm going to be off the mic. Feel free to post your questions in the room. You need to be back on the mic to answer your questions.